Let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Men should eschew anger and strife. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Second lesson, James chapter 1 verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Golden text, Galatians chapter 5 verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Quote, brethren, this gospel marks the opening of this year's men's fellowship anniversary. It is the theme that we should all think about because this gospel has been the cause of people's downfall. It is also the canker worm which has eaten into the fabric of the entire world. Whosoever wants to be a leader has to be very patient. Whosoever is at the head should have no wrath. If you observe throughout the whole world, you will notice that God has placed man at the head of all affairs. He first created man before creating the woman. God kept man as the ruler of everything. He appointed man to rule over the fishes, over the animals, and every created thing. Why is it then that man has been unable to rule over those creations? It is because of doubt and wrath and unnecessary argument. Man takes offense in every circumstance, whether or not repugnant. He doubts everything. That is why the Father has set aside this day for all men throughout the entire world to come and receive the word of God. We regard this gospel as insignificant, but I can assure you that it is very important. What you are expecting now can be compared to a patient who comes to a medical consultant to diagnose and prescribe cure for his ailment, you cannot heal a man of his sickness if you do not know what is worrying him. And right now, anger and doubt is the onerous sickness which all men suffer from. Man is easily exasperated. It is not an easy thing for one to call a man and he follows him immediately without doubts and questions. If you waste time with him, he becomes angry. If you speak what he does not want to hear, he will shout at you. Brethren, how can such a man rule his house? An angry man is a wretched man. He is sick, foolish, and dead. It is said that anger lies in the bosom of fools. There is nothing a woman does that will not infuriate a man. There is nothing a child does that will not annoy a man. The man doubts and becomes angry at whatever is said or done. I am happy that the house is filled today to capacity and I know that the gospel of today that of tomorrow and of tomorrow will be written out and published to the entire world. This is what disturbs the world and that is why a man cannot rule his house. The reason that things go topsy-turvy with man is his propensity 
for anger and doubt. Yeah, you have heard of the life pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ, how patient he was. He did not take offense with any person and did not argue. It is said that a man of God must not be quarrelsome. He should not be angry. He must be gentle and patient with others. He must be gentle and patient when others offended him. He uses meekness and humility to change people from evil ways into the path of life. A man should not be angry for any reason whatsoever, neither should he doubt or argue for any reason. All the cases of killing wives, beating children, destroying a house can only be attributed to anger. It is only about 1% or less of men who are patient. The other 99% cannot control their exasperation. It is very difficult for a man to tolerate a woman. It is very difficult for the man to tolerate the children. For this reason, many children grow, grew up in their mother's houses. For this reason, many women are sent away with their children and others are brought in to replace them. There is nothing you will do to a man which will not infuriate him. A man has not the least patient. The beast-like behavior pattern of man has affected God. It has affected man. It has affected the animals and all the creation of God. It is this also that brings about war, hatred, sickness and death. It is the cause of all man's afflictions. Even if a situation does not call for trouble, a man will find cause to foment trouble. If you, being at the head, quarrel, fight and become angry, what do you expect the other members of the family to do? How a man should treat his wife and children? You have to be patient with your wife, your children and all those who have contact with you. You have to console them and be patient with them. You have to deal with them with all amount of gentleness, humility and love. If you have a daughter in school and she returns home for holidays pregnant, you will not only drive her away from your home but also with her mother you beat up the woman at the least provocation brethren it is for this reason that the father has called all the men throughout the entire world today in order to receive these words money is here wealth is here there is employment here but we seek for people who are patient and those who are not angry. There is too much pride and arrogance among men. If you want to speak, he tells you not to speak in that manner to him because he is not a woman or a child. He will flare up and ask if is he your house boy. And as he is taller, he will be coming closer to you, ready for a fight. That is why the men beat up their children, beat up their wives and every person around them. You will realize that men are indeed to be pitied. Conscious of men's propensities, the Father has put it to you that today when you hear his voice, hearken. Harden not your heart. The responsibility which the Father has entrusted to man is for him to be patient and refrain from argument. If your house falls, your wife and children are not responsible. It is only because of your anger and sin. After hearing these words today and you refrain from wrath and argument, you will have peace and prosperity in your house. Right now, the person who organizes or coordinates this anniversary is very angry. His heart is boiling with wrath. Why? 
because he has distributed circulars throughout the entire world informing people about this anniversary and yet he comes to meet the all virtually empty i think the father i thank the father because he has started instructing us in patience today i want you to notice that where two or more men gather they will puff up with pride against one another there is always pomposity and arrogance among them no man regards the other as anything anger hinders happiness it is also said that anger is momentary madness the moment you are angry you can demolish a whole building and later you turn to regret your action since you are at the head it behoves you to be patient no matter what any person does to you listen and be patient to him then will you become a good head you cannot avoid the situation wherever you go it is the man who has to be at the head but will anger and argument and arrogance allow things to work out properly as long as the person is at the head as long as the person at the head is angry and argumentative how do you expect his house to stand? Man should be an example to women and children. You want everything to work according to your own suggestion. You do not want to listen to any other person. Every man creates a kingdom unto himself. The woman is ready to subject herself unto the man, but the man is not prepared to submit to a man like himself god is a man christ is a man and also a woman a tree and everything but he keeps man at the forefront of everything and he himself takes to the human form but if you point to a human being as your own leader the man will become furious and would not want to listen to him. I am telling you this with tears in my eyes and sorrow in my heart about what is happening to all men in the world. The women, the woman is in subjection to the man. The children also follow the man and look unto him for guidance. The man should be patient and without anger so that he can lead others in their right path if your wife offends you if you look at her just as a child and are not angry you will keep your house in peace if you behave likewise towards your children your house will be in order your child cannot set the house on fire your wife cannot do it no stranger can do that it is you at the head who sets fire in your house know that it is said that the wife should learn from their husband what is the what is she going to learn from you is it not anger and argument if you hurt her and beat her up at the first offense she will start insulting you and both of you will become firebrands and two mad persons breadwin let us read the first lesson again first lesson first timothy chapter 2 verse 8 i will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting breadwin have you all heard what is read to you? Do not put up any arguments and do not be angry. It is said, whoever lacks wisdom, let him ask God who giveth all to all men liberally and up upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. 
but you should not doubt. If you doubt, you are like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed up. There is nothing that a man performs without some doubts in his heart. When you complain that you always fail in all your endeavors, have you put your heart in it? Do you really believe in the purpose for which you set out? You do not trust your wife in the house. You do not trust your child. You do not trust your friend. You and you do not even trust yourself. You do not trust your handiwork. You are putting your hand here and there without making any headway. You spend your time in argument and anger. That is why this week has been set aside for all the men throughout the world. This sickness, this sickness has to be healed because the time for them to be crowned has come. Since it was ordained that the man should be at the hem of affairs, you have to be at the hem of affairs. If there is any person who hears this gospel and puts it into practice, all his problems and difficulties are gone. Even if somebody abuses you, do not be angry. If somebody disgraces you, do not argue and do not be angry. If you ask somebody to do something and he refuses to do it, do not argue with him. Do not ask questions and do not be angry. Disregard all bad things and hold fast to what is good. We are now in the new world. The old world has passed away. This is the reign and rulership of the Holy Spirit. It is not flesh and blood ruling now. The Holy Spirit rules with love, with peace, with patience, with mercy, with truth, and with self-control. If we continue to be angry, it will not be well with us. An angry man is dead, foolish and wretched. God does not like anger or argument. You remember when Christ saw Peter that morning? He sat on his boat teaching the people while Peter was worrying with his net for not making a catch. He instructed Peter to row out a bit into the sea. When Peter did this, he, he asked him to cast his net to his right hand side. You will remember that Peter had toiled throughout that night without making any catch. He said that he had toiled all night without making any catch, but at his word, he was going to try. When he did this, he caught a lot of fish until the boat started to sink because of the weight of the fish. If he had doubted and argued that he had been toiling all night without making a catch, and refused to obey, how would the glory of God be manifest? If anyone regards himself as a wise man, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Let all the men become fools and follow the Holy Spirit, doing whatever he tells them to do. You will see what this fellowship anniversary has brought about this day. If you remove anger and doubt, from your heart and allow God to do his work, you will see wonders which will be shown today and tomorrow. There is no other thing that robs us of our fortunes and love and prosperity and joy than anger and doubt. The canker worm which has eaten into the whole world 
and has disrupted the work of God is anger, doubt and argument. During Gospel, I do not illustrate heavenly things with earthly situations, but today I am going to do just that with two illustrations of what happened to two men because of anger, because of doubt and lack of patience. You say that God does not love you and that you have suffered a great deal. Your suffering is as a result of your anger and doubt. I want to give you two short stories to illustrate the work of anger and doubt. In the first illustration, there was once a man who was the president of a certain court. Before he left for the court, he gave some yams to his wife to prepare for him to eat on his return. When he came back, the wife did not prepare the yam, and that was all. He asked for the food, and when the woman said she had not prepared it, he beat her up and beat her to death. Brethren, can you realize the situation? Did he eat the food again? Have you seen what anger has done? In the end, he was hanged. In the second illustration, a certain man went along with his wife to the stream and they were going. And as they were going, the woman said she will go and pluck a fang leaves for sale and she will use the money to buy a dog. The husband said that when she buys the dog, he was going to rear it for, for her. The woman objected to this, saying that he was an unlucky man. The man insisted that he was going to rear the dog, and the wife firmly objected. The man became angry, and beat her to death. He was also hanged. Where is the dog? Where are the Afan leaves? These are real true stories. They are not from another world and they are happening to you every day. It has even happened to you this morning because of anger and argument. The men folks of today do not take advice. Brethren, all the problems besetting the entire world emanate from men because of anger. You cannot advise a man not to take a certain road. He will ask you why, whether he is not a man. At all costs, he will want to take that road and both of you will engage in a fight. Before a man listens to a woman, the woman has to pamper him and entreat him. Otherwise, he will not listen. There is no way you can approach a man without offending him. If you tell him not to keep late hours outside because it is dangerous, he will ask you if you want to control him. He will want to know if he is your servant. That is the time he will stay out most so that the worst can happen. Men are troublesome, you know. Men are really troublesome. If you advise man, he will complain that you have insulted him. He will never do what you bid him. He will only wait for the worst to happen. Brethren, the Holy Spirit has come. Let us lay aside all these traits and ways of life and accept the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit abhors anger, quarreling, arguments and varying, varying glory and vain glory. He wants all of us to humble ourselves 
and forsake the old ways of life so that we can see the glory of God. All this suffering besetting men are as a result of anger and argument. If you are to a woman advice, you people will deride you people will deride that you are a foolish man controlled by a woman in a gathering if somebody speaks to the approval of all his speech is enough to also contribute to the argument because they are also men men want to show their superiority and that the person whose statement is accepted is not the only man. If you ask him to sit down, he will shout at you and stamp his feet on the ground and there will be trouble. Wherever envying and strife is, there is confusion, devilish, satanic, earthly, sensual, and demonic situation the moment there is anger in your heart the holy spirit departs from you and you are covered with darkness no matter what you do see the way men are suffering today what is the reason for this it is because of doubt because of argument and anger the holy spirit calls you and you argue that you are not coming because you have no work you have no money what am i coming to do he says that you should leave fornication but you argue that there is nothing wrong with fornication after all there are so many women until now when it is said that you should not eat meat or fish the men continue to argue and they ask what is wrong with eating the flesh until this day the men do not accept that one should not take any form of medication whether tablets or injection he will argue when he is told not to drink he will ask you to advise your wife as for him he sees nothing wrong in drinking a closer reflection of all the problems in the world will show that men are responsible for the problems in the world. Things would not be like this if he had refrained from anger and argument. That is why you are called today in this men's fellowship anniversary to be intimated of these facts because when the fountain is pure the downstream will also be pure brethren i do not want to take you much further let your goal let your second lesson be read again